Okay. So, had a thought. It happens. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll work on it more. Nah. Um, equivalencies and false equivalencies. Comparisons. When somebody says I hurt and somebody else says so do I and you're not talking about the same thing at all in any way, shape, or form. But in psychiatry, you're supposed to say that their pain is as valid as your pain. And being a good person, you're supposed to say their pain is as valid as being, as your pain. But sometimes it's not, okay? Honestly, I, I've got friends going through chemo, going through hell. And I've got friends with a stubbed toe, and it's not the same. best example I've ever come up with is fudge. Okay, give me half a second. So there are five ways to make fudge. Six. There are six ways to make fudge. I turned you on. Yes, okay, thank you. It's my coffee. First way to make fudge is to go buy fudge, take the wrapper off, and claim you made it. I know people who do this. I used to know somebody who would regularly bring Costco rice or cash and carry rice crispy treats and cut them all up and claim she made them. It's like, no, you didn't make this. It's not homemade. Why? Because when you homemade Rice Krispie treats, they have a gumminess to them, and when you buy the stuff from Cash and Carry or from Costco, it does not have that gumminess. It's a different product. The next way to make fudge is to buy an instant kit. Just add hot water, stir, and let it sit for a little while, and you have fudge. They exist. The next way to make fudge this old school spoon fudge. Spoon fudge is what you're making when you make no-bake cookies. You put the butter and the sugar and a little bit of dairy and you know whatever in the pan and the cocoa powder and you stir it around and you stir it around and then you pour it over top of oatmeal. Okay, that's a no-bake cookie. But you can also take almond and oat flour and stir it into it put it into a pan, let it cool and get a kind of grainy there's a British dessert that I can't remember what it's called that is similar without the cocoa. It's got a kind of grainy texture to it, but it's, it's pleasant. It's really pleasant if you're bored and you're looking for something to do. The third way to make fudge is take a bag of marshmallows, melt them with some butter, add in your chocolate chips, stir it all around, put it out onto a cookie sheet. It's very flat. When you cut it, it's very chewy, gummy, and it has a greasy gloss to it. But people will do that and call it fudge. I call it chocolate marshmallow myself. But yeah, I don't have my teeth in. The second way to make fudge is to take sweetened condensed milk, chocolate chips. There's something else that goes into that. There's three ingredients, sweetened condensed milk, chocolate chips, and something else. Melt it on the stovetop, heat it up till it bubbles, pour it out, let it cool. It's almost fudge. It's good. It's 90% of the homemade fudge out there. But it's not really fudge. Because fudge is made by bringing your sugar to the soft crack, which takes about 20 to 30 minutes of boiling. 10, 20 minutes with a candy thermometer where you put your sugar and your butter and your water in your pan and you make it bubble for 10 to 30 minutes while stirring. And once it gets to that soft crack, then you put your chocolate chips in, stir that around, a little bit of vanilla, dump it out onto the pan and let it cool, and that's fudge. But that's six different ways people will make fudge and claim it's fudge. And all are edible and all are yummy and only one is really honestly fudge. I make the sweetened condensed milk version all the time. 
but when I make it, I tell people this is Jeter fudge, and I don't claim that it's fudge fudge. Okay? Um, let me look here real quick. I know it was in here. The problem with this particular cookbook is that the table of contents is not exactly alphabetized. So, yeah. So you have a choice between the order it's in the book, which is by the month. Here's the alphabetized version. It has three different table of contents. And no, it has the frosting. People will make fudge frosting and claim it's fudge. It's good. I'll make it. And I got one more page, two more pages. There we go. Fudge frosting. Sugar, cooker, salt, milk, butter, vanilla extract. Combine all ingredients except the vanilla in a heavy saucepan. Bring to a boil, stirring constantly for two to four minutes. Stirring constantly, said it twice. Remove from heat, pour into a mixing bowl, add the vanilla, beat at high speeds with an electric mixer for five minutes. Yields three cups. Okay? Fudge fudge has to be cooked till the sugar hits top crack or it's not fudge. That's not fudge fudge. Anyway, it's the same with life experiences and pain levels and health and people claiming that they're at the same level. It's not the same. What made me think of this? Somebody on Facebook posted about a problem they're having that to somebody who's had that problem before comes across from their descriptions like easily surmountable. All you got to do is deal with it. And then they got very, very pissy at everybody for offering advice. Don't post on a public forum if you don't want advice. Unless you're like a couple of friends of mine who will say, right, open up out front, no advice, please. Just looking to vent, just looking to have the conversation. I don't need tips or advice. That's valid. But don't say, oh my God, what should I do? And then get upset at the what should I do's. Okay, because if you tell me you have a bladder infection and you're looking for tips and I tell you to go get yourself some cranberries or some black cherry extract and you say, oh no, I can't do anything tart. And I say, okay, go get yourself a water pill or two. Get that, get, get stuff flowing through here. Oh no, I don't want to take a diuretic. Okay, so what do you want to do for your bladder infection? Just just tell me. Oh, I just want it to go away. It won't go away on its own. It'll go to your kidneys. Well, I guess I'll go to the doctor. Well, I'm glad you have insurance. Okay, I need y'all to see this because I just saw it in the camera. Parathyroid goiter right there. See him? Right there. See that? That's a parathyroid goiter. It usually doesn't show up and it just means that I've been eating too many things in the cabbage family. Goiters usually sit on the top side of the thyroid. So it's a big ball right here that you can see. And it's on the outside of the throat. Parathyroid is on the back of the thyroid and it swells into the throat. And this is what's coming out around. Can you see that? also known as my gills, are trying to sprout. Anyway, if you have medical insurance and you have the ability to go to the doctor, please don't hit me up for medical advice. It's really pissy when you don't take it. And not everybody's problems are the same. And blah, blah, blah. I'm tired. Wah. My goiter's acting up. I have a goiter. I have a goiter. <laughs> That's the photo that the this algorithm is going to use to to tell you to watch this video. You know that, right? That's the photo. It always does it. 
Talk to you later.